Hi, welcome back to the Learning Simplified uh, series. So today we are going to understand how electronic transfers work. So first let us try to understand what is a payment system. A payment system is any system which is used to settle financial transactions through transfer of monetary value. It could be between two financial institutions, it could be between two people, peer to peer as it is now called, or it could be between an institute and a person. The classification could be further based on whether it is instrument based, which means there is an underlying physical check or a draft or a manager's check, or it could be electronic, which means there is no physical backing of any kind of instrument, or it could be card based, which could be debit card or a credit card. So an e-payment is something where you transfer without exchange of physical cash or instruments. Electronic funds transfer involves moving money from one account to another account of different financial institutions. So let us try to see how physical money is able to move without the actual movement itself. To understand how money moves, it is important to understand how settlement happens. There are three types of settlement. Let's look at the first one, method A, which is the corresponding banking type of settlement. So let's take an example of here, Alice trying to move funds from her account in bank one to Charlie's account in bank two. So in all cases, in all the methods, you will see a message is being sent from bank one to bank two. And on receipt of the message, bank two credits to Charlie's account. But why would bank two take a risk and credits Charlie's account just on the basis of a message? So that's where settlement comes in. So let's look at the first method, the correspondent banking method. So in this case, in bank one, it debits Alice accounts and credits a mirror account or a shadow account of bank one in bank two. So bank one has got a real account in bank two and a shadow account of itself in bank one. Secondly, bank one sends a message to bank two to credit Charlie. Then in bank two, once the message is received, it credits Charlie's account and debits an account of bank one in bank two. So that's why bank two doesn't have any risk at all. Let's look at method B, which is the net settlement method. The same test scenario where Alice has to transfer to Charlie. Here in bank one, it debits Alice's account and credits an internal account. A message is now sent by bank one to a central clearing system. The central clearing system is usually managed by the central bank or an agency nominated by the central bank. The central clearing system then sends a message to bank two. Bank two on receipt of the message, it credits Charlie and debits an internal account. And at the end of the day or at a scheduled period, the clearing system calculates the net settlement or the net amount owed by all banks. All these happens in a batch of bulk payments. In method C, the real-time gross settlement, usually used for high-value payments. In this case, Bank 1 debits Alice's account and credits an internal account. It sends a message to the central bank RTG system. The central bank RTG system holds accounts of all banks. So bank one has an account on the RTG system. Bank two has an account in the RTG system. The central bank RTG system debits bank one account and credits bank two's account and then relays the message to bank two. Bank two on receipt of the message credits Charlie and debits an internal account. So we are now familiar with all the three methods of settlement. But in all the three methods, one thing has been the key standout. It is 
that every method involves a message getting transferred. If you were to study any payment mechanism in any country, you need to ask the following questions. The answers to these helps you understand how the electronic transfer happens. Firstly, what accounting entries are passed in the source and target banks? Secondly, and probably the most important one, how is the message transmitted? To whom? And what is the format of the message? It is important that the message is transmitted in a very secure manner. Thirdly, how does the settlement executed between the banks? Is it method A, which is correspondent banking, or method B, which is net settlement, or method C, which is the real-time gross settlement? What are the payment limits? Is it per day or by transaction amount? Is it 24 by 7 enabled? How rejects and returns are handled? For example, in the same scenario, if Charlie's account was inactive or closed in bank 2, how will bank 2 handle that reject? How will it return it back to bank 1? From where and how can these be initiated? Can these transfers be initiated only from the branch or only from mobile? Is it net banking enabled? And so on. Finally, are these transfers instant or are they scheduled? Coming to the message types, we have seen the message playing a clear role. So what are the different types of messages? Firstly, the most common one used for international banking and many domestic RTGS transfers, the SWIFT empty formats. Second most widely used is the ISO 2002 format used by SEPA, which is the European payment method, and many domestic automated clearing houses also have adapted it. Thirdly is the ISO 8583 format, which is used by credit card and debit card payments. Apart from the above three international standards, banks are free to use their proprietary XML formats as prescribed by the central bank or structured file-based formats for electronic transfers. So these are the five most popular ones. So let's take an example of a Swift message type. This is how a typical customer transfer looks like. This is one transfer which has got lots of field tags and their corresponding values. So for example, the field 32A depicts the date of transfer, the currency and the amount. You have field 50K, which has the name of the ordering customer, or you have field 59, which has the credit account or the beneficiary account. Example of an ISO 2002. Similarly, there are tags for the dates and a placeholder for the amount, among other things. So let's take how Egypt has adopted. For RTGS, it has adopted SWIFT-based systems, while for their domestic transfers, they have used ISO 2002-based systems, which are batch-based. Nigeria, although they have adopted RTGS SWIFT-based, their ACH and instant payments are proprietary formats, as prescribed by the central bank. So do like, share and subscribe to the Learning Simplified series as we come up with more interesting scenarios of core banking. Thank you.